Hey guys, welcome back. So, another video. Uh, in this video, I want to talk about the battery upgrade that I did on my i3. And uh, my i3 is a 2014. It used to be the 60 amp hour one, and now it's a 94 amp hour one, which is really, really, really handy. And I absolutely love it. So, I did an upgrade. First of all, I'm gonna mention that I didn't do the job like mechanically on my own. I hired BMW for it. So, if you're looking for a uh, how to video on do the job on your own this is not it uh, this one is gonna be mainly for the it's gonna be mostly useful for the Scandinavian market and I actually have a guide in the Swedish BMW i3 Facebook group uh, in Swedish that explains um, all that I'm gonna mention here um, so if you're interested and you should probably check out that group there's a few things I want to talk about and um, explain but mainly this is for the Scandinavian market because uh, from what I uh, from what I discovered it is really hard to find a BMW mechanic uh, service center that will actually do this job because um, what they told me is that uh, BMW doesn't offer this job um, as something that they have a manual for so um, I found out that there is one um, BMW center in Norway that does this job, but they had to learn on their own. So they had to have a customer that came in and like, oh yeah, we can try it and figure it out as we go along. So they've learned it and my car was their fifth car that they did. And it took them about five hours or so. And now it's been about two months since they did the job and it works really, really good. Actually, I'm charging now and yeah, it's fine. So few of the topics that I want to cover is um, first of all the biggest one how much does it cost second of all is can you do this on a range extender Rex and can you only do this to the 94 amp hour battery or can you even do it to the 120 amp hour and third question that I got actually from some people was um, can you also upgrade the charger from the 7.4 kilowatt to the 11 kilowatt charger so stuff like that and um, then it's mostly like useful stuff like how do you find your new battery so to say and where do you do the swap and stuff like can you do the swap on your own of the battery and what happens to the old battery do BMW claim it or can you keep it on your own uh, do they give you any warranties and why not just buy a new BMW i3 with a bigger battery might be easier could it be cheaper maybe so also why did I do the swap like this and um, what's the reason for me was my old battery bad or something like that so first of all no it was not it was perfectly fine and um, yeah so those are the things that I want to talk about uh, this might be a long video so hope you enjoy it and uh, let's get started with the price so first thing we're gonna talk about is the price so the total price for me ended up with 64,000 Swedish and that's actually after I sold six of the eight modules from the old battery pack so I made 18,000 Swedish from that so before I sold it my price was 82,000 uh, Swedish corner it was supposed to be about 85,000 Swedish um, but I got the shipping for free of the old battery the used one yeah, I also found a cheaper hotel, so I got the price down a little bit. It was supposed to be about 85 before I got the old battery home and sold it. So, biggest part of the price is the 94 amp hour battery that I bought. I paid 50,000 Norwegian Kroner, which is a lot of money for a battery. It's like crazy. I was like, for a while I was wondering like, what the fuck did I just do when I sent them 50,000 Norwegian? Uh, that was about 54,000 Swedish. Uh, I have seen after that the batteries go for about 40,000 Norwegian. But I've also actually heard that they used to go for even lower. They used to go for like 30,000, like, oh, really cheap. But it depends on the mileage and the, the demand of the batteries. So, yeah. Uh, the labor cost is uh, quoted at 26,525 NUC from the BMW center that I went to. And uh, they told me that this is the, it's, a, it's a, like a fixed price. That's what it's qu quoted at. Uh, when I went to pick up my car, actually, they um, they lowered the price. They only charged me 23,300 NUC because they said that the the coolant gas that they refilled, they needed less of it than they were expecting. So it got cheaper. And so, yeah, that's really good. And like really honest to, to lower the price than what they were supposed to charge me. So I'm happy with that. 
I ended up spending two nights in a hotel. I found it cheaper, paid uh, 1700 Swedish for that. And my electricity cost for driving to Norway, to almost Oslo and back, was about 700, maybe a little bit cheaper. But we're gonna say 700 for the, for the estimate. Yeah, so a few common questions. Um, can you only do this on a BEV or can you do it on the Rex? Um, from the BMW center that I went to, they had only done it on the BEV. They have never done it on a Rex at that time. So they said that it's supposed to be the same, but that since they haven't done it and there's no um, instruction or manual for them, they said that they could try it. It should work, but they couldn't guarantee it since they haven't tried it. And I think it has a really honest answer too. There shouldn't be any reason to why it could not be done on a Rex. Um, as far as what battery you could have, the 94 amper one, it works perfectly fine. But they told me that the 120 amper one didn't work at the moment. And I think it was something like software related that it didn't really, they couldn't do it simply. But they said that they were expecting to be able to do it in the nearby future. So for right now, 94 amp one only. Um, charger, can you upgrade from the 7.4 kilowatt charger to the 11 kilowatt charger? They said, no, they, you cannot do that. It's not possible. Um, at least not at this um, BMW center. Uh, they told me that they had tried this on the first customer that they had, and that's what led to a lot of the issues um, for that customer. They had a lot of problems. Uh, but, so that, that one, if you just skip that one, then it works fine. Number three, how do you find a new but a used battery? So I found mine on findeal.no, and it's a Norwegian, it's basically like a used car parts uh, website that lists the... Uh, all of the Norwegian um, like junkyards um, where they butcher the car and they sell the parts basically. I'm gonna link it below and that's where I found my battery. They, this one seems to have like all of the Norwegian sites in the same so it's really easy to search there too. You don't really have to um, look around on different websites but um, there are a few different ones too that you can look for. Uh, I'm gonna try to find them again and link them below. Um, I did look on a few different sites actually before but I ended up seeing that um, I, I believe all everything that the different websites had findeal.no had too. They had everything. Number four this is a big one. Where do you do the swap on the battery? And I actually ended up um, calling a few BMW centers here in um, Stockholm, where I live. I live in Stockholm, Sweden, and um, they could not do the swap. They basically knew nothing about it. They, some of them even told me that it's not possible. And someone quoted me like 200,000 for the job and the battery. And um, my impression is that um, I knew more about it than they did, so not much help. Um, so. BMW doesn't give a guide on how to how, how to do this job. So basically every BMW center has to uh, find a reasonable quote to give to the customer and they have to learn on their own uh, without a manual. And that's what BMW Bavaria in Lillestrom did. And uh, I really recommend them. They're really, really good. I really liked everything from their like customer service, that the email contact that, um, that I had with them. I emailed them back and forth, back and forth a lot. and. Uh, they're really, really good. And so I ended up driving all the way to Lillestrom, which is just outside Oslo in Norway. So depending on where you live, it might be kind of far away, but considering the options, um, there aren't really that many options. And from what I found, this is the only one that I know of that really concretely, I, that say like, yeah, we can do the job for you. I tried to email two different ones in Germany too, but they never even replied me. So it's really hard to find a BMW center, but I'm gonna link this one below. And if you feel like you wanna do the swap, you are okay with the price, and you feel like maybe taking a road trip for a few days, then this is really the place to go. Really good. Number five, can you do the swap on your own? And uh, basically I, I would say, yes you can, but you need to have equipment for coating, you need to empty the coolant gas, you need to refill the coolant gas. The battery pack weighs about 265 kilos, so when you drop it out it's kind of heavy. But I don't really have any mechanical knowledge on that, so I can't really give you any help on that part. But it's possible, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would just recommend going to Bavaria Lillestrom or if you find one closer to you that can do the job. Find a professional, it's better and it's safer. 
and they actually give you some warranties too. Number six, what happens to the old battery? BMW used to have a replacement program where they you left your car at BMW and they did upgrade. But the thing back then was that they, they took uh, your old battery in return as they did the job. But this doesn't um, apply anymore since uh, you're paying them to do the to do this job and at least not with uh, Bavaria Lillestrom. As far as Bavaria Lillestrom goes you own the old battery. So for me it was a matter of how do I take care of the old battery since it's mine. Either you could find someone that wants to buy it right away or you give it away to one of the junkyards because I'm sure that they will love to have it um, basically just for free then though. Or uh, you find a way to bring it home and you take it apart and you sell the modules one by one. And that's what I did. So that's what you can do with the old battery. Uh, Warrant this. The old battery, um, I got that one from Grönvolds, Grönvolds in uh, And they told me that they gave, that they offer a warranty on, I believe it's six months. Um, BMW, I believe that they had a three months warranty on the job. And uh, that passes along really quickly. But, so it's not, it, you cannot really compare it to the original warranty that the BMW gave you, which was uh, like eight years, 100,000 kilometers. So it's not like that, it's not comparable. If you have an old i3 60 amp hour and the battery warranty has expired or is just about to expire, then you basically don't really have much to lose anyway. So you either you don't have warranty or you don't have warranty. So what's the difference, I think? So why not just buy a new BMW i3. Uh, this, is a bit, this is a bit of a personal topic um, decision. This is a bit of a personal decision. Um, and it depends on how your situation is. Um, how much, first of all, how much can you get for your old i3? How much does it cost for the new one? And then you have to weigh it. Do you get the lower mileage on the, on the new one? Maybe you do. Maybe you get, well, for certainly you get fa faster uh, 11 kilowatt charging, so it weighs up a bit more. Uh, maybe it's better condition, maybe it's more, uh, more equipment, maybe it's like nicer interior, whatever. But it also depends on the price. And I did look a bit on the prices, and for me it seemed to cost about 90,000 Swedish for selling mine and buying a new one. And this is actually now we're trans um, and now we're coming into the last question like why did I do the battery upgrade and not just buy a new i3? So in my case, I had done a lot of upgrades to my car. I had uh, lowering kit, um, spacers, LED uh, LED bar in the front. I had a towing hitch in the back. I had a stereo build for like a boatload of money and um, tinted windows, debadged, I, I did like a lot of small stuff. You've seen it on my channel. And for me, all of that weighed in. I really liked the small uh, mods that I have done so far. And if I would sell this car and get a new one, I would lose all of this. And I didn't really feel like doing that. So for me, that had a lot of value, uh, especially the stereo build. Um, cost a lot of money so for me weighing that in it got way more affordable to just upgrade the battery and especially after I sold part of the old one it got even cheaper so it, I think I ended up with like less than half the price of uh, buying another i3 and doing the mods to that one so it's really affordable to just upgrade the battery last thing that a lot of people are gonna wonder like was the old battery bad or was there something wrong with it or stuff like that and no there was not nothing wrong with it the old one I even you know I drove it 500 kilometers from Stockholm to Lillestrom and uh, fast charge uh, 10 times on the way there and it worked fine cooling worked fine everything worked fine so nothing wrong with it it had done 85,000 kilometers uh, the degradation was uh, from the menu, I think it was about 15%. It could be a little bit less, but um, let's call it 15. So it's not that bad. Uh, it still worked fine, but the reason I wanted the 94 was because I wanted more range on a daily basis, not because the old one had degraded a lot. That was a happy surprise. When I when I picked up the car, I went and charged it up uh, to 
I checked the capacity in this hidden menu and it even showed 30.5 kilowatt hours available capacity. So that means that compared to my old 60 amp hour one, the upgraded capacity was 90% compared to that one. 90% more. I think that's all I want to cover with this video. If I missed anything, uh, you should leave a comment below, ask it, I will try to, to reply on the comments. And, and um, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.